Were you ever that one in one million? If so, what's your story? I was struck by lightning while talking on a landline. This was in the early 90s. Lightning struck the telephone line and traveled through the handset to my ear. My parents drove me to the air. I couldn't talk very well. My brain knew what I wanted to say, but my mouth didn't want to say it. I had a terrible stutter. My doctor told me that I had had a dose of good, old-fashioned electroshock therapy. My speech was normal the next day, but I get a terrible headache whenever a thunderstorm comes through. I get a terrible headache whenever a thunderstorm comes through. That's just your brain shouting stay away from the freaking phone. You are in over 89. I slept wrong one night and pinched a nerve in my neck so severely I lost the right side of my body. It just went silent like it wasn't there for months. I woke up in the worst pain I've ever experienced and couldn't talk, move or do anything. The doctor thought I was having a stroke. My doctor had never seen a case as severe as mine and it was purely a freak accident. Recovery took months but I have use of my leg and hand again, with some numbness. Other than pain and spasms I'm mostly back to normal. For my 7th birthday we went to Disneyland. They just happened to be having a car a day giveaway when we were there. For my 7th birthday, Mickey Mouse gave me a Pontiac Firebird. I have a very rare skin disease that only 1 in a million people get. I've been told that I'll probably never meet another person in my lifetime with it. Haley Haley disease for those interested. So rare they named it twice. Edit. According to approximately 624 other Redditors, Manhattan is the other name. I once guessed a 6 digit random combination on the first try. It was the only try I planned to give, as a kind of scratch pad whatever moment. Literally one in a million. I was in two separate car crashes in two separate cars in less than 45 minutes apart. Edit. I wasn't the driver for either crash. First car was hit from the side. Friend came and picked us up. Car lost traction and we slid off the road and hit a pole. Neither was that bad. Just poor timing. I was too. If you count the ambulance. Someone pulled out in front of me and I hit them because I had no time to brake. Had some bad back pain so an ambulance took me to the hospital. On the way there, someone pulled out in front of them. Diagnosed with an extremely rare liver disease, primary hyperoxaluria. Some 300 people in the United States currently have it. Basically pass a lot of kidney stones and need a double transplant to fix. I'm on the donor registry. I hope you find your match soon. 3. Not sure if this is a blessing or a curse. But I'm an extremely tall human, 7 foot 3, yes really, not sure how rare that is. 1 in 1.6 million of being over 7 feet tall, 1 in 2 of being asked how's the weather up there. I've got the middle toes on both feet webbed, so did Stalin, quack. This feels like a fun fact but at the same time a threat. My ex was struck by lightning several times and lived, died in a car accident though, so not as lucky as he claimed to be. Being struck by lightning once isn't lucky. Being struck by lightning multiple times is lucky. I was on Tinder and was talking to this guy. He was supposed to meet me for dinner. I texted him and no answer. Then I texted him on Tinder. Said that he couldn't make it. However, I got a text back from the number. It wasn't the guy that I thought I texted. It was the actor Gerard Butler. I thought he was lying until he FaceTimed me. Nice guy. Edit. First, I didn't go on a date with him instead. He lives on the west coast and I live on the east coast. I didn't keep his number because I respect his privacy. When he facetimed me he was super casual and asked me why I was using tinder and he wished me luck on it. I'm allergic to potatoes. Never met someone else who is so I guess it's one in a million. Never eaten chips or fries. Not me but my mom is allergic to potatoes. Never met someone else with a potato allergy except my mom wow. How I met my wife. I'm from the Netherlands. She is from the US. We met in Israel. It was my first weekend in Israel. Decided to go on a pub crawl to meet some people and have fun. As I'm buying the ticket my now wife walks up to the counter to also buy our ticket. The girl working there introduces us. We hit it off the first night but I'm leaving in 2 days to stay with friends of friends in the middle of the desert for 3 months. 2 days after I leave I lose my phone. Don't have any way to get back in touch with her. I had little money and could stay work with the people in the desert. But I kept thinking about her so after a week I say I'm leaving. Take the next bus. Goes 3 times a week. 
at 5 a.m. and then a train to Tel Aviv. I had no idea how to find her, where to stay and very little money. I email a couple hostels to find a work stay agreement. Those jobs are very popular and usually planned months in advance. I get an email back when I arrive in Tel Aviv. I can come in for an interview because they have a spot. This is already ridiculously lucky. Right after the interview and dropping of my belongings. I went back to the first hostel to see if they would give me information. They wouldn't give me anything. Now I'm at a loss. Tel Aviv is a city of more than half a million people. I don't know anyone and have little more than the clothes on my back. Kind of defeated I start wandering around exploring the city. After a couple hours I get hungry and decide to treat myself to a restaurant. I'm well out of the tourist area and find a place that's almost empty and rather cheap. I sit down, order a drink and something to eat. As I get my food I see my now wife walking past the restaurant. She sees me I see her. I'm literally dumbstruck and just kind of grin and wave. Remember how I lost my phone? She didn't know that and just thought I ignored her. She waves and keeps walking. I throw like 200 shekels. Way too much. In the table and sprint after her. Explained and the rest is history. This is a great story. Glad you found each other. I was diagnosed with leukemia. I got a bacteria growth which killed the leukemia. A real 1 in 1 million chance. I almost died thanks to that bacteria though. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. Got a rare but potentially deadly rash from a medication. I laughed when I first saw the bottle with the warning, and said knowing my luck I'd get it. I did. Ended up in a burn unit with my skin sloughing off. Not a fun week. No sure about the odds on this one, but I survived a non-survivable plane crush. I was on an old PO2, famous for being very safe and uncrushable, on a tour of the desert in western China when I was like 7. My father's friend who hosted me and piloted the plane didn't survive but somehow I got out with a concussion and apparently passed out for almost a day in the middle of the desert, in the wreckage of the crash, 50 kilometers from the town airport, on the edge of the desert. The people who found me were some tree planters, they plant greens in the desert to protect towns from sandstorm. A lot of people live in these desert towns in China do this, found me on their way picking up a shipment. And the only reason they looked was BC they were making a bet on how fast the egg would cook in the sand and went off the road to test. I have the rarest type of synesthesia. Lexical gustatory. It means I taste words. I am allergic to the cold. Like literally. I get intense hives, swelling, I pass out, and throw up. Doesn't even have to be freezing. Below 45 degrees without a jacket and I can't do it. I have to carry an EP pen with me in the event that I drink something too cold or have a severe reaction. Please tell me you moved somewhere warm. This is my mum's story. She once called her friend. Back in the day on the landline. And another lady answered. My mum asks if her friend was there and the lady says sure I'll get her. My mum's friend hops on the phone and asks how she now she was here. Turns out my mum got a number wrong when dialing. Called a random house where someone was hosting a Tupperware party and my mum's friend just happened to be attending it. What are the odds of that crap? Took me way too long to realize you meant how did she know she was here. I thought I was having a stroke lol. My brain kept trying to read it normally. I own a Lego minifigure call Mr. Gold. This particular minifig was to celebrate the 10th series of the Lego figurine line. They are sort of like grab bags, you can feel for them but you don't know what minifigure you're really going to get. So because they were celebrating they thought it was a good idea to only make $5,000 of these. Anyways, when I was younger and even now I was really good knowing which figures they are simply by looking at the figures pieces and feeling out those pieces. I really like the minifigures cause I thought they were really cool and unique so I really wanted Mr. Gold and me and my mom hunted for it for a long time but after a while I gave up. Then one day I was at the Lego store and felt the distinct diamond piece and freaked out. Finding this figure was a downright fantasy. I'm 18 now and still want to relive 12 year old me's pure joy as he opened the packaging. OMG I've always wanted Mr. Gold. I love those little mystery packs. The first one I don't know about the exact odds, but I was born on the 7th of July 1977 and weighed 7 pounds and 7 ounces. Sadly though I clocked in at 6.50am, 
The other is that around the age of 14 I started to notice the outsides of both of my feet starting to get much wider. After a couple of years of buying expensive custom made shoes they decided to perform surgery on my feet. It turned out I had extra muscle growth along with something else I don't recall at the moment. My podiatrist told me he submitted a scholarly article on it. May also have been genetic as when my dad was 3. He developed an extra toe growing out of each one of his big toes. So close to 7. 77 am. When I was a teenager I had just started working at the local Sears Auto Center Express Lube Shop and on day 1 did a quick orientation and my first oil change. The manager walked away when he felt I was good to go and the oil change went well. Fast forward a few days later my manager asked me to come into his office and he explained that the oil filter I had used had one huge flaw. I didn't know what that was and it turned out the filter was pressed on backwards into the filter can and it wouldn't allow oil to flow in and it damaged the motor. They had to purchase a new motor for the person and I still kept my job. He said it was a 1 in a million chance that would have happened and it did on my first oil change. They have insurance for a reason. All sorts of weird stuff happened at our Walmart. Defective tires, filters, oil, you name it. They don't hold the employees accountable for their weird stuff. I was diagnosed with a rare cancer. That happens in males more often than females. Usually happens to patients between 45 and 60. And happens in the abdomen or legs. I was a 34 year old female. And it happened in my right arm. For the record I am in remission. But I couldn't believe I defied everything about the stupid sucker. As a driver in a Seattle, I use my turn signal. I had AFM, acute flaccid myelitis, when I was really young. It's like weak polio if that makes sense. My legs struggled to keep me up and I was consistently collapsing. However, the disease wasn't discovered at the time so I wasn't diagnosed. I was in and out of hospital several times of week, being tested for all sorts of bone cancers. When the disease was discovered I matched every description of it perfectly. But now, I am running cross country and doing alright. I have TMJ disorder, an uncommon chronic issue where my jaw clicks and hurts sometimes. I was temporarily put on some medication, baclofen, to ease the pain. The medication has a rare withdrawal effect that leads to schizophrenic paranoid psychosis. When I ended the medication, I heard voices and chanting, saw hallucinations. Thought my roommates were trying to poison me. Experienced grandiose delusions. The whole nine yards. Why one in a million? The withdrawal effect has a 2-4% occurrence rate in patients who received the meds via spinal injection regularly for several years. And normal dosage is 300 mg day. I was taking the medication orally. Pills. At 5 mg day and hadn't been on it for more than 2 weeks making my case so rare that there've only been 16 known instances of similar occurrences worldwide. Oh man. That's nuts. Hope you're doing okay. Psychosis is scary f. Uterus ruptured into my bladder after birth of my youngest. It was one stroke four in. Away from a major artery. Nearly died. Ro. The human body sucks at giving birth colon. Hope you're better now. Aggressive fallopian tube cancer. Two years later I had a malignant pleural tumor, also have late diagnosis of stage 2 and 3 urogential reflux which is usually discovered before a kid is out of diapers. I was too old for the surgeons to fix it properly. Also I'm a redhead with blue eyes, hitchhike a thumb, double jointed and have double row of eyelashes, and my kid is a pretty close copy despite her bio dad having dominant genes, half Japanese. When I graduated high school I was offered a full ride scholarship, entirely based on academic merit, to study the program I loved more than anything at the school I'd dreamed of going to for years. The school in question was notorious for giving very few scholarships and the particular scholarship I won is awarded to very few students each year. I'm still pinching myself sometimes. Hey man, you didn't win it, you earned it. I lived in Florida for the first 18 years of my life and spent most of my free time outdoors, fishing, camping, what have you. The summer before my junior year of high school I found myself out hiking nearby by my home with a buddy. We were stomping around in some clay deposits inside of a little ravine. Even minimal geographic relief is dramatic in a place as flat as the Gulf Coast. When it started to Florida rain, for those of you who can't relate, 
imagine a torrential downpour, our minds immediately jump to the exciting possibility of a flash flood raging through the crevasses we were exploring. In an effort to make our day more exciting and not take any chances, we began to climb vertically out of the canyons versus take the lengthy path out of it horizontally. We got to the top, put our feet on the ground, and did pull up. As I stood up I felt the ground underneath me squirm. I had stepped on a snake. I screamed and kicked the snake that was latched onto my foot off me by reflex. As an eagle scout, I immediately recognized the red on yellow pattern as the snake slithered away and knew it was a coral snake. We rushed home, drove to the hospital, and were seen. The doctors informed my parents the nearest intervenin was a 3 hour helicopter ride away. The first symptom, lung failure, would occur after 2 hours. My parents called my friends and family and we all spent time together without me knowing my fate. My friends and family arrived and subsequently left together. My parents turned off the lights and we prayed together. Around 2 hours after being bitten, a nurse came into our dark room with Gurney to collect my dead body. I asked the nurse has there been any developments to her surprise. The doctors came in, shocked I was alive, told me it was a dry bite, and that I should remain whatever religion I practiced. Edit, the 1 in 1 million is mainly getting bitten by the snake in the first place but also subsequently surviving. I'm shocked that they wouldn't even try to get you the meds, even if it was a long shot. You've been visited by the rowdy rough doggo of the wild west. Many a hoes of good fortune and delicious dishes of chicken parmigiana will come to you. If you comment giddy up pupper and subscribe to Updoot Reddit. Hey wait, there's something new. The Updoot Reddit Discord channel. Join for a heckin good time or if you want to share an idea for the next video, I put the discord link in the video description. Until then, check another video, or don't. Either way, have a great day you magnificent people.